Thank you. Um, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Ryo Suzuki. I'm a PhD student from University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, today, I want to talk about the shape bots, uh, shape tuning swarm robots, uh, with a collaboration with uh, Clement Chan, Yasuaki Kakehi, Tom Ye, Alan Du, uh, Mark Ross, and uh, Daniel Leitinger. So the shape bot is the uh, shape tuning swarm robots. So the, uh, these are kind of modular and self-transformable robots that move around on top of the surfaces to um, to show the display or representing a data or maybe um, uh, kind of everyday assistant. So in this paper, uh, we uh, describe the technical challenges as well as the design space of what kind of the uh, applications that these kind of shape changing swarm robots can, can, can do. So the shape changing swarm robots lies in the intersection between the swarm robots and the shape changing interfaces. So in contrast to the swarm robots or shape changing in interfaces, it can leverage the both individually and collectively transform the shape to uh, more uh, provide more expressive as, as well as the uh, interesting application domain. So uh, we mainly uh, explore the application domains that uh, in, in the two categories, uh, one is uh, using a tangible medium to display information or uh, for uh, data visualization, but also we uh, explore as an ambient assistant to, uh, to be kind of, you know, the, uh, distributed and embedded in the environment. So uh, let me briefly talk about background. So our work is a line of the tangible user interfaces in which in the uh, leverage the leveraging a physical object as uh, a representation and a manipulation of the digital uh, user interfaces. So in contrast to the graphical user interfaces, the physical object can provide a more, you know, the rich haptic affordances and uh, manipulation. Uh, traditionally, as a tangible user interface is, is lever leveraging a static physical object and the overlaying the graphical information on top of, on top of it. But gradually, uh, in literature of HCI, um, we, we also leverage the dynamic physical object to fully represent the dynamicness of the digital world, so-called the shape changing user interfaces. So the shape changing interfaces has been first explored through the single purpose materials such as a new e, inflatable mouse, a 54 set, and a bendy. So these are using a single purpose material uh, that can transform into a one or two states. But uh, gradually uh, leveraging a collective behavior of the many different you know, shape changing elements to provide more expressive and general purpose uh, shape transformation. However, uh, this shape transformation uh, often requires a very he heavy, large, and complex devices. For example, this is the uh, inform uh, from, a, from MIT Media Lab requires a lot of pin underneath the table. But by the way, he's my advisor, Daniel Reichinger. But um, so the idea is we want to uh, decompose these elements into a, a collective of the distributed, distributed and you know the and the collective element, so that we can be more. Uh, this can be more modular, and scalable, and deployable into the environment. So this idea has been explored in this. Uh, liberating swarm robots at the user interfaces. So the, um, the zoo is, for example, the pioneer of this work, uh, but the uh, recent work has explored the, like a UV swarm, Ruba board, grid drones, Pico, and reactor, uh, explored how these uh, swarm elements can be represented as uh, using it as a display or information. But these swarm robots can only move around on, onto the 2D surfaces. And it, it, it doesn't have like, you know, the expressive 3D surfaces. So uh, recent work has started going beyond the 2D shape, such as a robotic assembly, a kinetic block, so the dyna block tries to make a 3D shape on top of this uh, collective discrete element. But the most of them are static. So we hypothesize what if these you know, these swarm robots not only move around on top of the uh, surfaces to make a 2D shape, but also go beyond the 2D to provide more kind of you know, expressive uh, uh, um, display to, for example, the showing the surfaces or maybe different data. 
But also, we think by leveraging this uh, shape transformation capability could also enhance affordances or uh, provide more, you know, the uh, ubiquitous assistance. But to enable that, we have uh, technical challenges in which we need a very miniature size linear actuator, but also require the large transformation capability. So to solve this problem, uh, we take inspiration from the recent highly extendable linear actuator, such as pneumatic wheel, Morpheus, and Giraffe, to, uh, to invent the novel miniature wheel actuator. So the miniature wheel actuator is using a two DC motor to feed the wheel to extend from the two centimeter to 20 centimeter. So this is the, uh, basically um, the mechanism of the tape measure. So some, uh, this, you know, the, uh, the seat is in, uh, uh, rolled in a, in, in a shaft, and then the, uh, the motor rotates to feed and retract and extract. Again, so uh, the leverage, uh, the advantage of this is a very miniature and a very small, but it also has a large extension capability. And then we put this linear actuator on top of the, this robot. The Swarm robot has a two DC motor to individually control uh, the wheel, and also they have the Wi-Fi chip to uh, wirelessly communicate. So these three rectangles uh, serve as a port for the USB and uh, rechargeable chip and a reset switch, and uh, it's gonna be unintentionally looks phased. But, um, so we are uh, putting this linear actuator onto the horizontally or the vertically so that um, these swarm robots not only move around the surfaces but also have a very large deformation capability. But this linear actuator can be also module so that, for example, we could put onto the horizontal surfaces also, but also vertical actuation, but also can be used as a curved line or maybe putting the origami on top of it to, uh, uh, on top of it to, to the expansion or maybe a Hoberman structure for the volumetric expansion. To track the robots, uh, we use a, a fiducial marker on the bottom. So that the, and then yeah, we use a camera underneath the table to capture and track. And then the, uh, the computer is connected to the camera and track everything and then they send a command to the robots to navigate it. So we also um, uh, use a, 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 a a collision avoidance so that the, uh, these robots can also, you know, the uh, free navigate. So to track and control, uh, again, we use a camera underneath the table and a transparent table so that um, uh, you, you can see it from the, uh, with the computer vision to track and then we made a GUI control to navigate and control uh, with like a sketching. But also, the same mechanism can be used for the, uh, the user input. For example, if the robot is not moved by, uh, controlled by the uh, computer, but uh, it moves, then the, uh, the system tracks it as a kind of user input. So for example, the system can track the location, locate, move, orient, and a pick up of the user input. To fabricate um, the linear actuator, it consists of the 3D printed parts and a two tiny DC motor and a, a very thin lead 0.1 millimeter polyester feet. So uh, the first, we're gonna attach the polyester feet onto the uh, shaft and then put the DC motor uh, in it. And then uh, we're gonna put the end cap on top of it and then the attach with the tape so this is a very simple fabrication. So now uh, you can just uh, plug into the battery, then you can just uh, you know, actuate in, a, uh, in that way. So um, uh, linear actuator has a, has a crease in the middle so that it, it can be somehow very robust um, for, for our purposes. So we also evaluated the, uh, the robustness of the linear actuator. So it's gonna be, uh, depend, it depends on the uh, length, but it's gonna, uh, the, ma the minimum, uh, maximum force is a 1.6 Newton, and uh, the minimum force is a 0.3 Newton. So uh, please refer the paper for more detail. 
So the important point is what we can do with it. So yeah, we explore a bunch of the different applications in the two categories. One is a tangible medium, tangible user interfaces, and another one is an ambient system, everyday system. So let me briefly describe the tangible medium. So the tangible medium is uh, ha the, the use, using these robots as a medium to display information or uh, represent data. For example, uh, by changing the shape and uh, uh, are spatially aligned to, for example, represent the wavelength, but you could also touch and manipulate in a physical space. Or in this case, for example, the, uh, sh uh, the showing the bar graph in a physical space. For example, in this, in this example, uh, the robots are uh, distributed to show the population data of the each state so that uh, you can see it and touch it, uh, how, how, and then you could also manipulate it to see how the different lo uh, location can be. But also the uh, leveraging horizontal extension, uh, it can be also more kind of expressive display uh, compared to the existing swarm robots. For example, uh, this robot can uh, create a shape, an interactive create a shape, or um, with a kind of rectangle, uh, a triangle, or hexagon. But also uh, by leveraging a uh, vertical dimension, vertical shape changing capability, it can be used as, for example, the CAD to uh, preview to physicalize uh, you know, this information into the uh, element, and also can be used as a kind of text. So our robots only have now 12, but the, uh, we are also interested in what if these robots can be more, for example, the 30 to 40 to make more expressive shape. So this one is uh, how this, uh, you know, linear action robot can provide somehow, you know, the uh, company logo with the 30 robots. So you can see it in, co in contrast to the, um, uh, Oh, by the way, so this one is a kind of online simulator you can access on the GitHub, so the, uh, you can just play with it. So we compare the, the linear actually, uh, the transformation capability, how you know, the effect affects the expressive of the shape. So the, this one is compared, uh, this compares the, the existing shape just a dot-based swarm robots with the linear-based swarm robots. So you can see it, um, the bottom side can be more, you know, expressive uh, uh, display. But also, uh, we think this can be very useful for ambient assistant. Ambient assistant means the, it, these robots are distributed into the environment and then the ambient support our everyday life. So for example, uh, by leveraging the horizontal extension capability, these robots can, for example, the sweep the desk to clean up, clean up. Or maybe, um, for example, providing affordances. For example, if the coffee cup is too hot, then they uh, provide, uh, just uh, gather together to provide like a kind of vertical fence so that uh, the user cannot touch. <laughs> but, now, now it's ready. Um, you know, it's gonna be just an indicate. Okay, it's it's ready to drink, so that it's gonna be disappear, so that the user can user can grab. So the good thing of that is, uh, oh, it's very uh, you know the um, can be deployable to the everyday environment. But also, uh, this robot can, for example, provide a tool like a pen, but also this robot can become a tool itself. So for example, to provide mechanical constraint for the ruler, so that this robot can, you know, also provide inch to physical assistant. So um, these are application scenarios, but if we think the shape bot is just only a single instantiation of the larger design space of the shape changing swarm robots. So for example, the shape changing swarm robots can be larger to, for example, the functional scale and then just cha change the shape to uh, transform, for example, the, uh, the move, moves the uh, existing furniture. Or maybe uh, leveraging a locomo different locomotion capabilities, such as a war, shaving, or mid-air to, uh, to provide a mid-air display, for example. Or maybe leveraging a different materiality, such as a soft robots to provide more kind of expressive inf uh, deformation. But also the uh, connectable behavior to make it more graspable object. All right, uh, let me conclude. 
So our contribution is three words. The first one is uh, uh, we introduce the concept of safety in one robot, which is both uh, which leverages both individual and collective shape transformation. And to demonstrate the idea, we uh, developed the shape bots. Uh, the technical contribution of the shape bots is a novel linear actuator to expand uh, to expand from the uh, two centimeter to twenty centimeter. And then by leveraging this capability, uh, we explore different application. And finally, uh, we explore the design space uh, for the future research opportunity. So again, this is just only the single instantiation, and uh, we are very excited to uh, explore more and uh, to, to provide opportunity to HCA community in general to explore more kind of interesting application domain. So this is the end of my talk. So thank you so, thank you so much for attention. All right, uh, let's get some questions here. Thank you so much for your talk. Uh, it's fascinating. Um, is there any possibility you're on the chop market soon? <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm currently a uh, fifth year PhD, and I, I'm possibly on the job market next this year. So if you're hiring, please let me know. And thank you for asking by my advisor. <laughs> Thanks for your talk. I just have a question. So uh, if you change the, the, the speed of the motor, the both two meter, you can actually change the the curve, curve, curve the shape of the mm -hmm. uh, robot. Do you have any idea how you have any extension from this uh, work, something like that, or um, we we haven't. So, for example, the one interesting application is uh, by connect by by collectively cha uh, using a curve line. For example, we could also make a. Uh, more expressive, for example, ruler, which provide a cons uh, mechanical constraint to draw in some kind of curved line, for example. Uh, are, are, you, are you talking about the kind of application or more like a? No, I was uh, thinking of the how you can uh, control. Yeah, control the motor uh, so that you can uh, make more variety of the I shapes. I see. No, uh, short answer is no. Uh, we just only uh, explored one curve, but I think it's very possible to, you know, to using more kind of precise control for each motor to uh, create like a different, you know, the curve curvature. All right, let's thank our speaker again. <laughs>